Welcome to the Pencil Bob channel. I hope you enjoy my stories. Please like and subscribe and hit that notification icon so you never miss out. Now on with the stories. Alright, so here's the deal. I'm gonna tell you about this whole mess with our HOA. It's been driving me up the wall and I just need to get it off my chest. Buckle up because this is gonna be a long one. So, we moved into this townhouse a while back. It's on the north side of town and when we first got here, the place looked amazing. I mean seriously, it was like something out of a magazine. The landscaping was perfect, everything was neat and tidy, and we thought we'd hit the jackpot with this neighborhood. Fast forward to now and boy have things changed. It all started around Christmas time. My wife and I, we like to get into the holiday spirit, you know. So we put up some decorations, nothing crazy, just some lights and a wreath, that kind of thing. Well, you'd think we'd committed some kind of crime the way the HOA reacted. They came down on us like a ton of bricks complaining about our decorations. At first we were like, okay fine, maybe they have some rules about this stuff. We didn't want to cause trouble so we took them down. But then things started to get ridiculous. See our townhouse is in a pretty dark area. There aren't any street lights and it gets bitch black at night. My wife being the smart cookie she is, decided to put up some lights around our front door just so we could see where we were going, you know, basic safety stuff. Well, you wouldn't believe the fuss the HOA kicked up about that. They acted like we were trying to turn our house into Times Square or something. It was just a few lights for crying out loud, but no, apparently that was too much for them to handle. Then there was the trash can incident. One day, we get this angry call from the HOA. They're yelling at us, and I mean actually yelling, about how our trash cans were left out too long. Now, I'm a reasonable guy. If we'd messed up, I'd own up to it. So I went out to check. Guess what? The trash cans they were losing their minds over weren't even ours. They belonged to someone down the street. Can you believe that? They didn't even bother to check before going off on us. It's like they just assume we're always doing something wrong. But here's where it really gets under my skin. Today, I decided to walk around to the front of our place instead of going in through the garage like we usually do. And let me tell you, what I saw made my jaw drop. The landscaping which was so beautiful when we moved in looks like a disaster zone now. Most of the mulch has blown away, leaving bare patches everywhere. The trees, man it's sad to see, they're all bent over or broken, it looks like no one's taken care of them in months, and get this, they've planted all these non-native plants all over the place. Half of them are dead already, it's like they didn't even think about whether these plants would survive in our climate. The ones that are still alive look sickly and sad. The worst part, those weed blocker sheets they put under the mulch, they're all torn up and scattered all over the sidewalks. It looks like a tornado hit the place. I'm honestly embarrassed to have people over. What must our visitors think when they see this mess? It just burns me up, you know. Here they are, nitpicking every little thing we do, but they can't even keep the neighborhood looking decent. It's like they've completely forgotten their actual job. I wanted to take some pictures to show people how bad it's gotten, but apparently that's against the rules too, of course it is. Heaven forbid anyone sees what a mess they've made of the place. You know what really gets me? I'm pretty sure they're paying someone to come by every day and check for violations. Like, they've got the money for that, but they can't be bothered to hire a decent landscaping company, it's ridiculous. When we first moved in, our place was one of the first buildings in the development. It looked fantastic, everything was perfect. Now, it's like they've just given up. I keep thinking back to when we were house hunting. This place looked so promising. The model home was gorgeous. The common areas were immaculate. They sold us on this vision of a beautiful, well-maintained community. And for a while, it was great. But now, it feels like we've been duped. It's like they put all their effort into making the place look good until they sold all the units. And now they just don't care anymore. The worst part is, we're still paying the same HOA fees we were when we moved in. Where's all that money going, because it sure as hell isn't going into maintaining the property, I've tried talking to some of our neighbors about it. Most of them feel the same way, but everyone's scared to speak up. The HOA has a reputation for being pretty vindictive, no one wants to be the one to rock the boat. But honestly, I'm getting to the point where I don't care anymore. Something needs to change, we can't keep living like this, walking on eggshells in our own home while the place falls apart around us. I've been thinking about running for the HOA, bored myself. Maybe if I can get in there, I can start making some changes from the inside. But then I think about all the bureaucracy and politics involved, and I just get tired. Sometimes I wonder if we should just cut our losses and move. But we put so much into this place. 
It was supposed to be our home for years to come. The thought of starting over somewhere else is exhausting. Plus, with the way the property looks now, I'm not sure we'd even be able to sell for a decent price. Who'd want to buy into this mess? I just don't know what to do anymore. It feels like we're stuck between a rock and a hard place. Do we keep fighting? Do we give up and move? Or do we just resign ourselves to living in a place that gets worse every day? I know HOAs are supposed to protect property values and keep the neighborhood looking nice. But from where I'm standing, ours is doing the exact opposite. They're so focused on petty rules and regulations that they're missing the forest for the trees. I mean, what's the point of having strict rules about holiday decorations if the basic upkeep of the property is being neglected? It's like they're more concerned with power trips than actually doing their job. I've thought about trying to organize the other homeowners. Maybe if we all band together, we can force some changes. But getting people motivated is like herding cats. Everyone's got their own lives, their own problems. It's hard to get people to care about community issues when they're just trying to get through their day to day. So here I am, venting to whoever will listen. I know it probably won't change anything, but at least it makes me feel a little better to get it off my chest. If you're thinking about moving into an HOA community, take it from me. Look beyond the shiny exterior. Ask the tough questions. Because once you're in, it's a whole lot harder to get out. I don't know what the future holds for us and this place, but I do know one thing for sure. This HOA can take their petty rules and shove them. I'm done playing nice. From now on, if they want to complain about something, they'd better make damn sure they've got their facts straight first. And maybe, just maybe, they should take a look at their own failings before pointing fingers at the rest of us. Don't listen to them. They're total crap heads. Honestly, I'd threaten to sue their asses for religious discrimination over the Christmas lights complaint. It's completely ridiculous that they would go after you for something as harmless and joyful as holiday decorations. Not only is it an invasion of your personal expression, but it also reeks of bias. By taking a firm stand and showing them that you're willing to take legal action, you'll make them think twice before trying to screw with you again in the future. They need to understand that their nitpicking and harassment won't go unchecked, and that there are serious consequences for their actions. Imagine the look on their faces when they realize they're messing with someone who knows their rights and isn't afraid to defend them. That kind of bold stance could make them tread much more lightly and reconsider their ridiculous power trips. People are really forgetting the first rule when it comes to buying property in Association HOA. Read the covenants, conditions, and restrictions, CCNRs, thoroughly before you even consider putting in a bid. This crucial step is often overlooked, but it's essential for understanding what you're getting into when joining an HOA community. The CCNRs are legally binding documents that outline the rules, regulations, and expectations for property owners within the association. They cover everything from architectural guidelines and maintenance responsibilities to use restrictions and assessment obligations. If, after carefully reviewing these documents, you still find yourself willing to live under such conditions, then by all means proceed, but do so with your eyes wide open. However, don't stop there. Once you're familiar with the CCNRs, use that knowledge to your advantage. Don't simply take the HOA board's word for it when they claim you're doing something wrong or violating a rule. Always refer back to the specific language in the CCNRs. Seek clarification on ambiguous points, and be prepared to challenge inconsistent enforcement if necessary. Remember, HOA, boards can sometimes misinterpret or misapply the rules, whether intentionally or not. By being well informed about the CC and R's, you position yourself as an empowered homeowner who can effectively advocate for your rights within the community. This knowledge serves as a powerful tool in maintaining a harmonious living environment while protecting your interests. In essence, doing your due diligence before purchasing and staying informed afterwards can save you from countless headaches and potential conflicts in the future. HOA management companies suck. Invoiced HOA $330 for online complaint. This HOA got a $330 invoice from their management company. Management company claims it took three hours to write the four paragraphs on the BBB website below. Management company admits they overcharged HOA and blames the victim, HOA, for not being patient enough. First three or four responses on website below. Initial complaint. The 1st of April 2024. Complaint type billing issue status answered CSMHOA over billed us $930 for late fees that never happened. 
and billed us for $385 for mailings they said they would not charge us for, for a total of $1,315. In addition, in an email dated January 8, 2024, they wrote this, We have also removed $180 in late fees per the board's request from nine accounts. As the late fees were run at the board's request, and are deemed as valid late fees, we do not refund those to the HOA. However, they failed to mention the late fees were removed because the previous manager, name removed, accidentally charged people late fees twice, therefore we are asking for the $80 in late fees back for a grand total of $1,395. In addition per the contract we are supposed to get an audit paid for due to these many mistakes, and we are requesting that CSMHOA acknowledge that they will pay for the audit per the contract. Business response, April 15, 2024. Hello, Mr. Name Removed. We have reviewed the context and the history of the matters you have mentioned here. Our records indicate that the association brought these concerns to the attention of your assigned account specialist. As such, the account specialist researched, compiled documentation, and submitted your request to the executive team for review in late March. This complaint was submitted before the executive team could meet to discuss your requests. The late fees that you mentioned never happened were indeed billed, thus per the contract, CSM billed for the percentage. As with any task that is not completed by a computer, there is a certain margin for human error. CSM has always and will continue to make every effort to correct any concerns that are brought to our attention. Again, it is unfortunate that the association did not allow adequate time for the executive team to respond to your requests and provide further information, explanation or rectification regarding the audit. The contract states that if the association has an audit and the results of that audit reveal losses due to CSMS gross negligence, we will reimburse said losses. We will await the results of your audit prior to any further action on this particular matter. Business response. April 30th, 2024, to whom it may concern, they state the late fees never happened. If that is the case, why did they email us saying they will refund the late fees? When in fact our response to him stated, the late fees that you mentioned never happened were indeed billed. The consumer is the one who originally alleged the late fees never happened. We stated that they did and that is why they were refunded. The attached email does not show the entire contents of the communications between our company and the consumer. Please see attached for the full email chain, which shows that we not only addressed the consumer's concerns via our original response, but we have also corresponded internally with this consumer regarding any outstanding refunds. He has not expressed dissatisfaction with our responses internally, but has rejected our BBB response. We respectfully request that this case is reclosed as his claims for reopening the case are not substantiated. Customer response, the 5th of May 2024 complaint, number removed. I am rejecting this response because CSMHOA was informed after we got our first monthly statement that the numbers were wrong. We were told in October 2023 this would be looked into. It never was. I followed up early December 2023 and was told again they were working on it. I request either CSMHOA fix our monthly statements or they reimburse us accountant fees to do so or give us a refund for these incorrect statements. I would like to point out that if these statements were correct in a timely manner, then the approximate $2,500 in erroneous fees would not have been charged to our account. Think about how unfairly CSMHOA has treated our account. Number 1 CSMHOA's monthly statements had errors that wasted dozens of hours of our board's time. Number 2 CSM failed to pay our electricity bill, and now we have bad credit with Duke Energy, and have to pay a deposit. Number 3 CSM double paid our landscaper because he issued two invoices repeatedly with different invoice numbers, but same date. Number 4 It's been over two weeks since we closed business with you, and we still have not received any of our money back. CSM literally messed up every possible thing we were paying you to manage. As far as the previous issues I am satisfied with the $930 in refund of fees, the approximate $350 refund in postage, and the waiving of the approximate $8 in office fees. However, I am not happy CSM has not agreed to pay for an audit. I am positive any auditor will agree with all the mistakes and then per the contract CSM will need to pay also requesting the $80 in charges under name removed be returned because he erroneously charged twice, and the approximate $50 in fees from Duke Energy to be reimbursed. To sum up, 1. Either correct the monthly statements or give us a partial refund. 2. 
$80 in fees refunded. 3. $50 in Duke-related fees refunded. 4. Asking again for audit costs to appropriate credit to be issues. Sincerely. When our previous management company shut down, owner retired, we did a lot do research. The previous company kept pushing us towards a company that was just slimy as hell and had a lot of complaints online. We ultimately went with a smaller one that wasn't recommended. We do have some issues with them. It's inevitable. But overall, they are customer-focused and don't play shenanigans. I know how lucky we are at finding one like that. I love the we wish you would have just given us time to address this with our executive board for an issue that was raised with O resolution three months ago. Amazing how so many companies are minutes away from addressing months-old complaints when the person finally goes public with the issue. Feel like you're pretty much Saul on what's left though. I don't follow why the new manager would be responsible for the old manager double billing, and even if they were required to pay for an audit when there's gross negligence, which they seem to dispute, gross negligence is a fairly high bar and probably hasn't been met from this alone. I would like to thank you for watching the video to the end. To encourage us to make more videos, please like, subscribe, comment, as well as share. Check out this other video if you haven't already.